Hey guys, and welcome to this week's episode of D3 Live. So today I'm going to be talking about the future of operating systems. Now of course for the past 15-20 years we've pretty much used the same kind of basic operating system. For example, you have a desktop, you have a row of applications, you know, you use your mouse and your keyboard to navigate, and it's been basically the same. I mean, if you took a person who was using Windows 95 and you put them on a computer with Windows 7, odds are they'd be able to figure it out pretty well. Same goes, for example, if you were using OS 7 um, and now you go up to, you know, Snow Leopard, it's going to be a lot different, sure, but you're going to be able to get the general idea of it. But now, I, in my opinion, I think we're going through a major change in the industry. So with the advent of touchscreens, with phones and tablets and whatnot, I think that a lot of the people who are you know using a laptop and using a desktop can very well in the next few years start moving over to tablets and of course everyone pretty much has a smartphone which can, of course can do a lot of the stuff that you know you used to be able to do on a computer. So you know there's a big thing about operating systems that's really going to be shaking up everything. So if you take a look at the desktop and the laptop operating systems, you'll see that there are a lot of major things. So for example, with Windows 8, Windows 8 has a really dramatic uh, redesign that is very very similar to what you might find on something like a well, Windows Phone 7 but of course it's going to be for a standard desktop laptop or of course a tablet. Now what this means is that especially for like tablets and uh, devices with a touch screen it's going to work really nicely. You can be able to pan and swipe and do all the kind of you know gestures and whatnot that you would expect to do but for on the desktop and the laptop you still have a very similar interface where you can still just click and go through the keyboard. Uh, now as far as how that's going to work and how perfect that's going to be, we're definitely going to have to wait and see, but you can definitely tell that Microsoft has their eye on the future and they're definitely looking towards the touchscreens being the, you know, the future of technology. Same goes for if you take a look at OS X Lion, a lot of the things that they've added are pretty much straight from iOS and especially on the iPad. Um, you know, there's a lot of, of course with the Mac App Store, which is a little bit more of an abstract thing, but of course, there's the Mac App Store. You have all kinds of different features that you know are very, very similar looking to you know on iOS. I mean, for example, a lot, a lot of it they're trying to implement having a touchpad, so you know you have your multi-touch gestures, all that kind of stuff. Even you look outside uh, where HP is trying to get WebOS on computers. Now, how that will work, um, you know, what it'll do, all that kind of stuff. Who knows? But we should be seeing WebOS on computers as well which of course has typically been just a touchscreen only operating system. So there's a lot of changes going on right now and I'm really excited about it. Okay, so for the second segment of D3 Live, I'll be taking live questions from everyone in the chat. So I currently have a ton of people in the room right now and of course, as always, every episode of D3 Live is filmed in front of the live audience. So let's go ahead and just take a few questions. Uh, what is my favorite OS? Uh, well, that's kind of hard to say. I mean, I, on the desktop, I use Windows. Uh, it's not so much that Windows is way better than OS X or way better than Linux or anything, but it's just because I've used it forever. All the programs I rely on on a daily basis are on Windows, and it's just it's just simple. It's just I know it. Um, nothing against OS X. I love OS X. Like I said, I love Linux too, but it's just a lot of the stuff is I'm on Windows, and there's no major reason for me to switch. So that's my favorite uh, OS on the desktop. Uh, as far as mobile goes, that's kind of harder. Um, I love iOS, obviously. iOS has been uh, fantastic, but I'm really, really starting to love WebOS. WebOS is such an elegant operating system, especially with the new hardware like the Veer and the Pre 3 and the touchpad, all these new hardware, all this new hardware. I'm really looking forward to that. So, uh, yeah, hopefully that answers your question. It probably doesn't, though. Uh, what do I think of OS's going more and more mobile and touch friendly? Uh, well, like I kind of touched on earlier, I think that there's good and bad. I think that, you know, I still love a t uh, keyboard and mouse. I think that's uh, still one of the best control methods around. But touchscreens are definitely the future, at least at least in part, alongside keyboard and mouse. If not, just getting rid of the keyboard and mouse or getting rid of the mouse. Uh, as long as they do uh, keep like a, an idea like Windows 8, don't abandon what's already works. I mean, yeah, I know that you know touchscreens and stuff. And for tablets, yeah, sure, touchscreen only is going to work just fine. But for laptops, desktops, and that kind of thing, you do not really need to get rid of what's worked just fine for the past few years. So as long as they keep an eye on tablets and everything, but without you know you know hurting the core audience, I've got no problem with it. Do I think iOS will have a fourth device? Uh, well, they technically do. They have the uh, Apple TV, it's the, yeah, the iPod Touch, the iPhone, the iPad, and the Apple TV. But uh, yeah, I do think that over time that Apple will expand their lineup. I mean, you know, they first started with the iPhone, they had the iPod Touch, and recently they added, like a year or so, they added an iPad. So uh, it's, it's really good OS. And personally, I wouldn't be surprised you know, if we had some kind of like a MacBook Air or like an iPad with a keyboard or something, um, I could definitely see them expanding it out because iOS is really good and I think there's a lot more opportunities out there for 
you know, touchscreen OSs and iOS and all that kind of stuff. So yeah, I think eventually, maybe like, it might be a couple of years, but I definitely think that we will be seeing some more uh, devices like that. Uh, is Samsung's request for seeing Apple's new devices silly? Uh, yeah, I, I don't honestly think that they're going to get uh, an okay on that. I mean, they might, but I think most of that is, and if you guys are not familiar, Samsung and Apple are kind of getting into a legal battle about, you know, oh, you copied me, this, that, this, that. You know, it's all the kind of same stuff. But uh, yeah, Samsung... Uh, said that, hey, we want to see your iPad 3 and the iPhone 5 and, you know, all these kind of devices, which I, I don't think it's going to happen in the first place, but uh, I think it's mostly just they're just going at it back and forth, just trying to get stuff done. I mean, it's, it's just it's just politics. Um, will WebOS get enough users for developers to hop on board? That's an excellent question. One of the biggest things, uh, one of my biggest problems about WebOS is the fact that there are not that many great apps. So, for example, there's no official Skype app just yet. Um, you know, there's a lot of like major apps like that you might want to find like Netflix or something on iPhone, Android, etc., etc. That's not on WebOS. But as they start selling more phones, all that kind of stuff, hopefully developers will start taking notice and getting some good apps on WebOS in general. Uh, so anyway, guys, that's it for this week's episode of D3 Live. If you enjoyed, definitely be sure to hit that subscribe button up above. I do D3 Live every Saturday at 3 o'clock Eastern Time, so you can come uh, watch the show live on Blog TV, or of course watch the pre-recorded episodes live on YouTube.